Welcome, and thanks for checking out another video about ClassPad.net. Today we'll be taking a look at some numeric and integer based functions just to give you a few ideas of some, uh, some things you can do, some techniques you can use within the Calculate Sticky. So uh, if you want to find any of these, in fact, that we're dealing with today, you can click this question mark up here and select Function List and it'll pull up a, a new tab from which you can browse all the existing functions. But we'll be doing a quick look at a few for you today. Uh, first one we want to take a look at is int g, which is the greatest integer function. And the greatest integer function, what it computes is the greatest integer that does not exceed the value I put inside here. So in this case, the greatest integer that does not exceed 2.4 would be 2. Uh, a more common term for this that some may know is the floor function because in effect you can sort of imagine it rounding whatever number you have down toward the floor. Um, actually it's probably even better to say to round it leftward because a lot a lot of times people might think down means towards zero and at, th at this point it does but things get a little more interesting when you start looking at negative numbers and if you think about it we, we don't want that number to get closer to zero or smaller in magnitude, but we want it to get moved more leftward. And to the left of negative 3.7 is negative 4. Uh, now there is not a counterpart to this. What you may know as a ceiling function is not defined within classpad.net. But there's a really easy way to create a floor and ceiling function with any of your pages. You can simply do something like this and define, whoops, I'm going to need an input. So the floor of some value x is just going to be the greatest integer function applied to x. And then, this is where you have to get a little a little clever, if you want to create a ceiling function it's as simple as doing this. Um, I'll leave it to you to kind of consider the ramifications of why that works, but uh, just for comparison now, if I want to do the ceiling, we expect this to round up to the next integer, or I should say rightward. So the ceiling of 2.4 is going to move it rightward, and the ceiling of negative 3.7 should also move that rightward. So that's a way to create a floor and ceiling function. Um, a couple others that I want to introduce to you. We have int, which this one is just going to truncate my value. So for comparison's sake, you'll notice negative 3.7 just becomes negative 3. All it does is cut off the decimal. It's not rounding in any manner, it is just cutting off the decimal. And frac, if we convert that from standard to decimal form, perhaps you'll see what's going on here. We're just grabbing that decimal component. And it keeps the sign in this case. A uh, few other things I'd like to show you. We have the IGCD, the integer greatest common divisor. So I can put in a list of numbers. You can put in as many as 10 integers in here. And it will find the greatest number that can divide into all of them, or divide all of them. Uh, and then we have a counterpart to that is the least common multiple. So we find that. And another integer function that might be useful to you. This one will do modular arithmetic. So if I take 100 and I want to see what the remainder is when I divide by 9, it's 1. Essentially it's um, it's what you might call clock arithmetic. Anytime you've tried to add a number on a clock and you're starting at 9 o'clock and you add 5 hours, we often, at least in the US, don't say it's 14 but we convert that to 2, and that's kind of the same concept here if you're not familiar with it. Um, even nicer is all of these functions I'm showing you do work with lists. Um, I'm not going to show all of them, but for example, if I wanted to take a sequence of numbers and do modular arithmetic with them, what this will do is it will find the remainder of 15 divided by 4, which is 3, 20 divided by 6, which is 2, and 25 divided by 8, which is 1. 
So uh, you can do that kind of thing with the GCDs and LCMs as well. I'll leave that to you to explore. And lastly, another function I really enjoy uh, is prime. We can put in a sequence of numbers into a list and it will actually compute for all of them. I'm just going to stretch this out so you can see it a little better. So we check if if these numbers are prime and 2 is, 3 is, 4 is not, 5 is, etc. So you don't have to do a list though. We can always just put in some other number and check and see if it's prime. So there you have it. A quick look at floors and ceiling functions, uh, integer, fractional parts, and some integer arithmetic. Thanks for checking us out. And if you like what you see, please subscribe.